Alrighty. Looks like the FedEx guy doesn't want to come up the driveway, so we're gonna go get it. Go down. Eh? Until I get it right. Yeah, these days I've been wide awake, I never sleep late Got a lot to do, I treat a Sunday like a weekday Do it for my son, set the table, I need three plates Have my cake and eat it, baby, don't forget the cheesecake Alright, so some time has passed. It's been like two weeks since I got this thing. Basically, just didn't want to take the time to set up the GoPro. This is one of the most fun things I have ever done. I've done plenty of mods to it over the past couple of weeks, which I'm not to show you it's not so bad. I did also have a bar and mirror, but that thing broke. It came with two. Both mounts broke. Piece the two together to make a third mount. That mount broke too. Floating front rotor from Madura. They don't make a rear rotor that I've seen though. Still stock tires. I have new tires at the house, but I figured I'd run these for a while. I actually did a smoked rear taillight that has blinkers as well. So there's blinkers here, but I'll have to show you once again when I stop. There's two blinker boxes in here, because I didn't want them blinking forever if I did one camera box. But now that that's set up, I have blinkers in the rear. Nothing in the front, but you know, the rear is more important anyway. And then for a temporary brake light, my second horn button here, and the press now is just a brake light. Running lights come on when I turn this on and turn on the high beams like that. The running light is amber down below, and then the high beam is white. Like 229 miles on this thing, and I've had it for two weeks, if that. Kind of incredible. Oh, that thing's cool. Battery life has been great. I have gotten 50 miles on a charge. As far as suspension goes, I put 100 PSI in the front fork and the rear shock, and my preload is about halfway up, as is the rebound. That's been great for in the woods. For the track, I've been turning this all the way clockwise and turning the rebound up a few clicks as well and that's helped a lot but really the main one for the track is the preload one of the last things i did was this plastic skin plate here so that's actually uhmw it's the same thing on the bottom of jet boats and on the bottom of a lot of side by sides now it slides over rocks great and it covers the peg mount so you slide right over shit one of the things that's nice about this skid plate is the oil change is super easy. All you gotta do is take a side cover off the motor, which with the stock plate, you actually need to drop the plate to do. You can do that right out of the side with this skid plate. And when you open the bolt, you can just let it run off the side while it's on the kickstand, and then just wipe it with a paper towel afterwards. Makes it very easy. This is it. Supposedly there's a ton of trails back here. We will see. So Eco really doesn't have enough power to wheelie or anything, but there is enough power to do, you know, 28 miles an hour through the woods and still jump shit, so it's pretty good. The only time I really do sport in the woods is if I'm really ripping or if I'm trying to hop a log. know where any of these trails go but hey we're here to find out oh power lines damn i don't know if this bog keeps going then this might be it because oh some spider webs 
That other trail looks like it went right here. So really, I guess it went over here. Kind of right there. I'm not seeing anything. We'll try the trail out, but maybe it comes out right there. Keeps going, maybe. It's an access road right there. I think I know where that goes. Otherwise, we'll go back and try the other way. So this definitely was a cool trail at one time. It's a lot to pick up, though. I want to make this thing nice again. Oh, yeah, I did Magura brakes as well. Or, uh, what was it? No, no, Shimano. Shimano pads there. Then the, you know, the Magura rotor. Stock rear rotor still. The rear has plenty of grab, really. The front's what actually needed it. Even after the pads. I feel like that rotor helped a lot. I, mean, I can lock this front out pretty much whenever now, as you can see. Cool rock. It's a cool stick. I was one of the guys that was worried about power on this thing, not having enough power. You know, I, I've been on all sorts of bikes, two strokes, two fifties, four fifties, three fifties, all the way down the little bikes. If I had 65s, 85s, 50s, I think we're on our 7th 110, 6th or 7th 110. Believe me when I tell you, this thing has plenty of power to have fun. Even in eco mode, I have a whole bunch of fun with it. But the direct mount head ended up actually snapping. I just got a shitty Amazon one. Not worth it. I mean, if you wash out in a corner like I did, it was a sandy corner that was just a slow fall thing bent right over now that i went back to the stock one if that happens again where the wheel gets caught and these come over you can just bend it back on the trail real quick and you're good to go not the case with direct mount so how i wired it with this light on boom that's my running light you can see there's no light under here got a little muddy in there That's the headlight, everything comes on in white. And you have a running light. The horn button right here, the second horn button, is the brake light, then blinkers. One blinker. Let's fix that real quick. You can change the speed with the dials on these guys. Just kind of tuck that in there, call it good enough. Everything else is wire standard. All this is regular. The horn button still works. I mean, the, I even left the start button. I kind of like that. Just took out the brake sensors. So, nothing crazy. This thing being so light makes it a ton of fun. It really does feel like a different sport entirely in between mountain biking and dirt biking. What is that? I realize this is probably just going to the water here, but we'll go back the other way. You always want to go the wrong way first. Nice area. Look at them. I don't know this area at all. I just saw it on the way home from work. So, who knows where it goes? Yeah, somebody with quads for sure rides this. Oh yeah, look at this. Yep, so this is a reservoir. Looks like they have fires out here occasionally. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, this is paved, so it's gotta come up somewhere. Where though? That's one other thing. This bike is actually big enough to stand up on fairly comfortably, which is pretty cool. I rode a 110 basically all last year. Look at that. I rode a 110 pretty much all last year, which you really can't stand up on for any length of time. You can hop logs and stand up and all that, but you can't do this down a road comfortably. I see a gate up here. Let's see if I know where this is. Not yet. 
pop it up here than that. So all you got to do, you get a quad block case. I got the magnetic one, so I can just, well, that's aluminum. Everything on this bike is aluminum. I can go like this. It's in. That's it. Don't move. Nothing. Scotland Road. Oh, Scotland Road? Really? I'll even leave my phone on the mount just to show you guys how good it is. Now this is the Pro Quad Lock Handlebar Mount. It's the metal one, basically. I believe it's aluminum. I don't even remember. And what is down here? Such a cool looking trail. The sport mode is. As you can see, this thing really has plenty of bullets. No problem jumping shit. Not an issue. Where the hell is this going? Oh, there's more trails in there, so. This has got to be another gate or something. It's obviously used as a quad trail, the space is right for the quad. Or side by side, I suppose. Small side by side. Quad trails that way. Oh, I see where this main trail goes, though. Let's see, no trespassing. Nothing that way. Well, let's see. 